Here's some ancient wisdom to start the new year. Our first of the new year Ayurvedic tip. Don't do a January detox. So today we're going to talk about why a January detox is bad for you and what you can do instead. After the holiday indulgence period, we often dive into January so full of resolutions and need to get back on track with our healthy habits, right? But a cleanse is not what your body needs or wants, right? So in this video, I'm going to show you how to live aligned with the seasons and still let go of the holiday overindulgence. We have some tips. We have three Ayurvedic tips that are going to help you to, um, to do that little reset in a much gentler form. And actually, we're going to be doing a series of Ayurvedic tips for the season. So click on the subscribe button below and you'll be not notified each time a new video is released to help you stay on track throughout the whole year. I'm Krista Stray with Flourish Yoga, your wellness lifestyle coach using Ayurveda and essential oils, sharing simple Ayurvedic tips for healthy daily habits. If you want to connect personally and get more information on Ayurvedic essential oils um, and Ayurveda and just simple wellness, click on the link in the comments and it's also in the description to join me for the next simple wellness class. It's called Oils for Health. And this is where we can dive into your personal health concerns and create that personal, personalized health plan that's, that works just for you. So stay to the end and we're actually going to go through a whole like little you know, short and sweet, simple daily habits plan to stay on track this January and to get this January reboot or reset working for you. But first of all, let's start with why. Why is a January detox a bad idea? Ayurvedic wellness lifestyle is based on living aligned to nature's rhythms and the seasons that come, that come along with that, right? So winter is our season of hibernation. We're supposed to be conserving and storing energy. I'm going to take a sip of my hot tea here. So I want you to think of the bear and the den and the squirrels and all those animals and what they're doing. And they're, they're not, you know, they're not drinking green juices. They're not having anything green because that's not alive in the, in the world right now. So while fall is kind of our season for bulking up on those energy rich foods, winter is our season for warmth and restoration um, and just really nourishing um, simple foods, right? It's kind of what we're, what we're looking for. So if you do a detox or a cleanse, you're going against mother nature. Winter in Ayurveda is Vata season. So Vata is cold, it's dry, it's rough, it's mobile, it's, uh, I think, windy, right? It's clear. So I want you to imagine this cold, crisp, clear blue sky day. Um, here where I live in Calgary, it can be, it's, it's actually is about minus 27. Blue skies, but there's like a rough wind on your face as I was walking the dog this morning. And did I say cold? Really, really cold, right? Um, so having these green juices, which are astringent, are they're it's another word for drying, um, cold salads, which are rough and hard to digest. And that's exactly what Vata is. And to stay in balance, we need the opposite, right? So you need, um, instead of cold, you need warm or hot, right? Instead of dry, you need moist, right? Instead of rough, we need smooth. Um, so think you know, smooth soups like a butternut squash soup or a mulligatoni soup or something like that that's going to be heating on your on your insides. Um, so that's Ayurvedic tip number one is actually comfort food. Okay, and so instead of you know comfort food is in like dry chips and things like that or popcorn, I want you to think comfort food is in soups and stews. Okay, keep it simple to prepare and really simple to eat and digest. So when we cook something together, so um, heated. Um, vegetables. I know raw foods are really good for us, but in the winter time, we don't have that digestive power to accommodate that. So when you heat them up, it's kind of pre-digesting. You're cooking things together in a super stew, so it's pre-digesting again. Super easy on your body to do that. So that's what we're going to look for um, in this season. So you can think of this as like clean eating, but not reduce eating. So make a distinction between those two. So we're going to wait for spring for any reduce heat, um, eating or all those fresh greens, all that type of stuff. That's going to be super powerful for us in the spring in the season that it grows. So another cleanse mistake that we can be making is dry brushing. Right. So this is kind of like, oh, cleansing. Let's put our, our um, doTERRA smart and sassy or slim and sassy blend on that and go for the dry brush. And um, which, yes, it's great for cleansing. It's a really good tool in the spring when the air is moist. So when I was talking about this this week with my Daily Essentials coaching group and even my complete kaffas, they're finding their skin is dry right now. Right. So this is a great tool for a kaffa kind of year round. But even right now, they would scold, you know, 
shift more over into the Vata mindset of using um, our Ayurveda number two, which tip number two, which is oil massage. So using oil massage instead of the dry brush. So if I was to dry brush right now as a Vata, um, it would actually just put me over the roof. Both my skin, which is kind of dry and almost friable right now, it would not be healthy on that. And actually it might, you know, cause um, disturbances and you know, places for infection and, and disease to kind of set in on that. And in terms of my nervous system, it would just be like through the roof. I would be able to to withstand that so instead think of this um, nourishing and restorative oil massage practice where you're uh, mis massaging oil into your system so you can still use those great cleansing oils such as our um, smart and sassy or the doTERRA slim and sassy blend as it's called in the u.s um, the doTERRA zendocrine blend those are great ones to use in your massage oils i've been playing with that um, already this season just to kind of help open up channels and things like that getting rid of some of that holiday overindulgence without going like full bore into this this cleanse kind of aspect on that uh, another great way to use those the both of those blends uh, slim and sassy and the Xenocrine blend is to um, set them as hot teas, as warm teas. So those are really good for kind of warming up your system, boosting that digestive fire, so to speak, um, but also just warming and nourishing on that. Another great cleansing oil, just while we're on that topic, is the lemongrass, right? Lemongrass is a really good energetic cleanser. So you need to let go of some of the past year. Um, lemongrass is a wonderful one to put in your massage oil. Um, also really good on any stiff and sore muscles from just, you know, being cold or being like cooped up and not, you know, moving around as much. I love to mix the lemongrass essential oil with the doTERRA balance blend. It is a great massage oil blend. It's one of my favorites. Um, and it is really good for this next tip. So so Ayurvedic tip number three is to embrace silence and stillness. So lean into stillness of the winter, the winter season. Um, you can do this by renewing or starting a meditation practice. And another way is to um, just, you know, tap into that creativity. Just be still and allow your mind to be creative and flourish. But just allow yourself that time and those moments just to, to sit quietly, right? To do some of those, you know, curl up, read a book, nourish your mind in that regard. So you can sip your hot tea um, and, you know, kind of, you know, really bond in that or really embrace that sense of silence and stillness. And the doTERRA Balance Blend is actually a wonderful grounding and nourishing blend for that meditation practice, if that's what you're going to tap into. The doTERRA um, Wild Orange is a wonderful um, essential oil for inspiring creativity if you're wanting to you know, do some artwork or something like that. So I make this my intention about four times a year to do to do a cleanse of some sort, okay? And while January is not cleanse season, we can still have that intention of letting go, of allowing, of boosting our bodies. Our body has a natural cleanse and detox. There's lots of stuff on the internet as why you shouldn't do cleanses at all. Um, but I think that we can you know, enhance our body's natural cleansing process when we have this intentional period for this. This is my belief or my... my um, practices around that. So I do this four times a year. And in the spring and the fall are our big um, Ayurvedic cleanses. We go all in. But in the winter and the summer, we do little mini ones. So in the course that I teach, the daily essentials, we do one four times a year, just aligned with what we're kind of working on in our course. Um, so just having that intention of clean eating, nourishing and supporting our body in the wintertime can be your um, the way that you can recover from the holiday overindulgence and still be in alignment with nature's rhythm. So you can join me on the Oils for Health class this week, and I'll share with you how you can take part in this um, group this month, so this January reset, um, in a mindful and kind of seasonally appropriate way. So the link for that is in the description, and so you can click on that easily to join the next class on that. And if you want to know more about your dosha, we talked about this Vata dosha, winter being the Vata season. Um, that is one of the Ayurvedic doshas. That's a whole other topic we'll talk about in another day. But if you want to know more about that, if you're curious, click on the dosha quiz link in the description and then take the test, and I will send you out some tips that are specific to your dosha. All right, post below. Do you need, you feel like you need a January reset? We'll call it a reset instead of a cleanse. Or what are you, you can add and add in your comments. Uh, what is your body needing? What are you craving right now in terms of um, nourishing or things that you just want to want to tackle? Just kind of tap into that. 
So at Flourish Yoga, we're all about making things simple and easy. And I find the ancient of wisdom of Ayurveda is just perfect for that, right? It just makes so much sense. Um, so you can check out that video for making your own massage oil and the links for that um, that oil massage are in the description, right? And I'm going to have the how to about that. And it is too, it is, you know, not to be, um, you know, uh, not to put it too, you know, lightly, but it is life changing, right? Oil massage for me has been totally life changing. It's my favorite. I think of all of, all of the daily habits. Um, and yeah, you can stay tuned. We'll do a video on that one of these days, but there is a lot of blog posts and resources that you can tap into. Plus, check out the meditation playlist um, for some options on finding stillness in this winter hibernation space. We've got lots of good ones on there and new ones that are be coming up. So if you click the subscribe button, you'll get notified when those are coming in there. And if you enjoyed this and found it helpful, which hopefully you did, uh, make sure to like the video. That just tells you what to focus on for future videos and to check out those playlists that we have for essential oil meditations, yoga and essential oil classes, Ayurvedic tips and healthy daily habits. Um, all of these can help to amplify your wellness lifestyle. And don't forget, so this January, I want you to follow these three Ayurvedic tips to stay in tune with Mother Nature. One, enjoy your comfort foods right? Clean eating, of course, but use those comfort soups and stews, really um, tap into those. Number two, go for the oil massage over the dry brush, right? Your nervous system will thank you and so will your skin. And then number three is embrace the stillness and the silence. These are your hibernation superpowers. All right. Thank you and namaste.